Well, I thought I was ready to film. I'm obviously not ready to film, am I? All right, so today I thought I'd talk about my most scary or you know my worst lucid dreaming experiences. Because although I've been doing this for several years, there are obviously always gonna be times where you know I get it wrong or I have a bad experience. I don't think anyone is safe from having you know scary or bad experiences with lucid dreaming. So basically what the, the first one, the first bad experience I've had is the type of lucid dreams where you're not completely in control, you're not completely aware. So you're sort of, you are lucid in the sense that you know it's a dream, but you can't really control everything. So you might be aware of the fact that you're dreaming and you can decide where to walk and what to do with your dream character body. But you can't, for example, stop a dragon throwing fireballs at you. You can't stop spikes coming out of the ground. And I think that the term for this is actually lucid nightmare. Um, but it's less of a nightmare and more just sort of a, a dream that I know I'm dreaming in the dream, but I can't control everything in a sense that I can decide what I do, but I can't control what other things do to me. And so that is, that's got to be my worst lucid dreaming experience, guys. You know, when you, you know it's a dream, you know you're lucid, but you can't stop annoying or bad things happening. And that's got to be the most annoying experience. The second most annoying experience is when your mind starts playing tricks with you. So you can become lucid, and then if you're curious about things like me, if you always ask yourself questions, and if you mentally play this game with yourself of like, I wonder what would happen if this happened, or if I did this. And so what, what happens quite often with me is I, I'm in a lucid dream, and in my head I'll sort of be talking to myself and I'll think, oh, wouldn't it be quite annoying or wouldn't it be scary if the floor collapsed or if pianos started raining down from the sky? And of course, what happens when you imagine that in your head, it happens, you know, it happens in the dream. And uh, I'm constantly having this battle with my own mental character, with my own sort of internal dialogue, where I'm constantly saying to myself, I wonder what would happen if this happened. I wonder what this would be like. And then obviously in the lucid dream, it happens. And then I regret asking the question, you know, especially if it's something that could be painful. And I'm gonna be getting onto another video, I'm gonna do another video soon about pain in a lucid dream because it's quite a subjective thing and there are some tips and warnings for that. But yeah, so the se my second worst lucid dreaming experience, I guess, is just when the, t the sort of lucid dreams where I ask myself questions that I don't really want to know the answer to. Like, oh, I wonder what would happen if a snake swallowed me whole, that, that might be interesting. And then obviously it happens and it, it hurts and you know then you wake up and you're all, agitated and it's just it's just not fun is it so th i have heard a lot of stories and testimonials and you know things that people have posted where they share their worst lucid dreaming experiences and to be honest quite a lot of them are quite troubling they're quite worrying um and i don't know if this is because you guys are watching a lot of horror films or i mean i'm a horror fan myself but i don't know what it is but i didn't know that there were so many people out there who experienced so many scary things in a lucid dream. I thought that it was a much more positive experience for everyone. You know, and obviously I knew I knew that depending on the level of lucidity, you're obviously gonna have some lucid dreams where you're not in control, some that are slightly scary. And if you're prone to nightmares, you're gonna also have scary lucid nightmares every now and then. But there are some quite troubling stories online. People are sharing, you know, stories about them being trapped in a lucid dream this is obviously a myth you can't be trapped in a lucid dream but it feels real to them obviously otherwise they wouldn't post it right unless they wanted attention so there are things like that there are also things like people feel people feel like they can't escape lucid dreaming in the sense that there are a few there are quite a lot of people out there there's a small sub community of people out there who class themselves as natural lucid dreamers they are constantly searching online for ways to stop lucid dreaming. When I'm doing my research about what content you guys wanna see, you know, either on a blog or on a, on a YouTube channel, one of the things that keeps popping up is you guys are typing in how to stop lucid dreaming, or I'm having too many lucid dreams. And obviously this isn't a lot, this is a, this is a minority, right? A minority um, of people are asking how to stop or how to, you know, stop having so many lucid dreams. For most of us, that's the problem they wish they had, right? You wish you had too many lucid dreams because then you could do whatever you want. But for these people who are typing this in, obviously it's very real to them and it's very uh, disturbing. And I think for those people, it's important to focus not on how to stop lucid dreaming, but on how to channel the lucid dreaming energy into something positive. 
Because obviously if you're trying to stop lucid dreaming, you're doing it wrong. Because you're either not in control, or, so, so, or somehow you're bored of having that ultimate level of experience. You're somehow bored of doing whatever you want. And that's something that can happen as well. You might be bored of just knowing that you're, you're in control of the dream. But for most people, I think you type in how to stop lucid dreaming because you're not doing it properly or because you're having lucid nightmares or because any, any, scary or, any scary or really negative experience with lucid dreaming can be changed and improved. It's not meant to be scary. It's not meant to be negative. It's meant to empower you. So I guess for those people, you should really think about learning how to lucid dream in, uh, in a holistic manner, not just lucid enough to realize you're dreaming. Because if you do that, then you're gonna have lucid nightmares, you're gonna type into Google how to stop lucid dreaming, and you're gonna throw away that potential. I mean, you've already learned how to lucid dream, but by saying how to stop, you're gonna throw away all the potential of the beautiful things you could experience if you just did it properly. It's done.